and we are live. Welcome everyone to DevToberfest week three. This is the UI day. And today in this session, we will have Fokker talking about VDI5 from zero to hero to continuous integration. And without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Fokker and off you go. Yeah, thanks. So uh, the title is clear. This is about testing a UF5 application with VDI5. Um, I hope you don't mind me looking up and down um, a couple of times because I have a multi-monitor setup. So please bear with me. And also at the same time, um, all the code is going to be in a public repository for you to, um, in the aftermath, have a look at things. So um, what is VDI5? Um, it's an open source tool that has its home in the UF5 community GitHub organization. And it's spelled VDI5, even though it's written WDI5 for the very sole reason that it's very awkward to pronounce WDI5 all the time. Um, it's an extension to WebDriver AO, a very popular end-to-end -end testing framework. And um, what is it, it works or it runs in the Node.js scope, then uses the UI5 record replay API from the browser scope of a UI5 application to a remote controller browser and interact with the UI5 controls in the UI5 application. This is the design time. Now the runtime or test time. This is you need obviously a UI5 application to test and some sort of a web server. In our case, preferably the UI5 tooling. And then you need well VDI5 test to execute to interact with the application to test the application. Um, I've prepped a very simple TypeScript-based app here, a UI5 app. Um, it consists of only two views. And uh, you can navigate, or there's a, um, there's a property binding here. On this view, you can um, navigate to another view where you see a list binding and uh, well back. And if you look at the code, it has um, web components in there. There's a property binding here on the input box. And if you look at the other view, there is a list web component or a list control web component also with an aggregation binding. So if you were to now get started, um, how to best inject or how to best install VDI5 in order to test this application, um, the probably most quickest way is to use npm init. So there's a command um, npm init vdi5 at latest, um, double dash ts for TypeScript. And the reason we have this strange double or triple or quadruple dash notation is simply for uh, npm reasons, they require it to pass on certain flags to npm that way. So if we execute this command, what's happening behind the scenes is um, WebDriver IO will be installed. On top of it, VDI5 will be installed. Um, there's going to be a default configuration put into place. And um, there's also going to be a um, convenient startup script being uh, well installed in quotes. If you look at what happened during that installation here by looking at the Git diff here, you can see the convenience script, VDI5, that uses the WebDriver IO CLI to run a dedicated configuration, also in TypeScript. There's the TypeScript-based configuration. We're going to get to that in a minute. And then there's um, a TypeScript configuration put into place as well. So if you look then at the file system, you have the test folder where the TypeScript configuration lives. You have the WDIO ConfTS, the configuration for VDI5 and WebDriver IO. And that's already it. And after that, you can immediately start running VDI5. Now, since we do not have any tests in place yet, nothing is run. How does um, a test look like? I'm going to put a new file in here. And let's say we want to test the input control, the web component input control. So this one here. Uh, 
Um, by convention, um, the test files uh, have a .ts, .ts extension, but you can name it actually any way you like. Um, it's a configuration thing to do. And I've prepped um, the basic or a very basic notation of the test here to make it quicker. So all in all, um, it boils down to having a test suite with a certain description and a series of tests that are denoted via its and represent the actual test steps that you want to run against the UI5 application. Then noteworthy is that you have a selector in place. So the means of how to identify a UI5 control in the UI5 application. And if you look really closely and if you have some experience with OPA5, you can already see this is the very same syntax that is used in OPA5 for locating controls. So BDI5 and OPI5 selectors are interchangeable and compatible. In order to then at runtime, actually be able to use the selector and shoot it to the browser into the application, there's the sole interface browser.s control. So that one transfers the selector from Node.js scope into browser scope, picks up the UR5 control, and then you can interact with the UR5 control, such as this. If you look closely, it's a dot get value call. And remember, we are in Node.js scope here. But if you look at the documentation of the web control input element, it has a get value method. So you can use all the browser, browser scoped APIs of UI5 in VDI5 at test time, they're aligned. And at the end, there's the assertion where we use the web driver our standard expects. So we expect the value of the input control to equal however that is spelled. Right on. So let's run this and see what's actually happening. Now there's a test being detected by VDI5. It opens the browser. It calls up the application, then it gets the value and it shuts down or it runs the test, um, asserts something and then shuts down the browser again. So you can see here, we have run that file. It was running in Chrome on Mac OS and we've tested the browser suite input name input here and the test name as well. And the test was successful. Okay, simple step. Now let's get into a, a TDD sort of a way. So from my point of view, what VDI5 should is, um, or should sort of fulfill three prerequisites. Um, first is it should run alongside your coding at implementation time. Then it should also provide, well, debugging capabilities for obvious reasons and um, yet be out of the way as a third prerequisite. So do not hinder the developer while developing, but sort of provide the safety net of running alongside the implementation to make sure that you don't break functionality in one place while you're probably implementing another functionality in another place. So how do we do that? Running alongside the coding is possible via the watch flag. What this does, is it starts VDI5 just as you're used to, as you've seen previously, but after running the test, the browser remains open. So you see the test was run. You can already see watch mode enabled up here, but the browser doesn't shut down, but it reacts on file changes in the source code and in the tests. So I hope I can align things on my monitor so that it's possible for you to see. I'm here in the test. Now I'm just editing the test file any way I like, and I'm hitting command S now. And you'll see that on the right hand in the very tiny console down here, the tests are rerun 
And you might have probably seen a little flicker in the screen when the application reloads and the tests are rerun. So have VDR5 running alongside the code. Then prerequisite two, provide debugging capabilities. Um, there's even a sort of a double debug capability um, possible with VDR5. For that, we first of all need a JavaScript debug terminal in VS Code here to hook up the Node.js debugger to WebDriver.io and VDR5. Then at the same time, we have a flag called debug, dash dash debug, I'll briefly widen this so you can see the entire command. And what this does is, you'll see in a second, it opens up the, it opens up the uh, Chrome native developer tools so you can inspect the browser time. Let me hit a breakpoint in here in the code. So this is again my TypeScript uh, test file. And if I now shoot off this command, Again, the watch mode starts, so it runs alongside your code. The developer tools open, and the execution of the test halts at this point in the test. And I can then, in Node.js scope, inspect what I ever need to inspect. Let's step one further and see the value. And in the browser, I can actually inspect your five elements or at least the browser down, look at the console. So what, wherever and whatever the need is. So double debug capabilities, one in the browser itself, and then in PDF five in the test. Um, let's put in some additional test code and show you another feature that comes in really handy at test time. I've now put in a second test where I not only retrieve the value of the input control, but where I actually change the value by a set value where the regular browser scoped API of the input web component. So let's put the breakpoint down here and then save the file. And remember what I said, it runs alongside the code. So as soon as I make changes, the tests restart, you can see it down here and in the background, the browser execution halts at that point in time. And now I can see that the value has changed to Smith Smithson, just as I denoted it down here. Sorry for the really tiny scope or resolution here. And then we get the value and change value again. And just as some of you might be used to from the ABAP times debugging, you can also in here change the value at test execution time. And thus, of course, in this case, fail the test. All in kept or yeah, voluntarily. So in order to do whatever you need to do at the test time. And you see the output here picks up the change value of the debugger and it well then fails the test. So we have it running alongside the code. We have some pretty neat and handy debug capabilities. Now there's um, the third option of how to really get out of the way. Um, as you've seen, we open up, um, or uh, VDR5 opens up a browser window every time you execute the tests. Now there is a flag, headless, that you can use in order to have the browser launch without a GUI. So have it running in headless mode under the hood, yet at the same time, get all the features that you would as if the browser would run with a GUI. So let me shoot this one up. And you'll see now no browser starts, still the watch mode is enabled. We're still in debugging mode and the execution of the test is again gonna halt at that point in time, even though we don't see anything. And that enables you to get the best 
of all requirements, I'd say, as I said, it runs alongside the implementation. You have the debugging capability and it's out of the way because nothing changes or interrupts your screen estate while you're developing. Um, another neat feature that I'd like to demonstrate here is um, the screenshotting capability that we took from WebDriver IO and changed it slightly in VDI 5. Um, The interface for that or the API for that is pretty simple. It's browser.screenshot and you can provide a name as a unique identifier. So I'm taking a screenshot here right before I change the value of the field. And I'm gonna do a screenshot right after the value is changed. So I can assert that this is actually happening. And if you now look at the file system, there's a screenshots directory up here. I'm going to expand it. And if I now run the, the code, again, let's say just via the regular NPM run VDI 5, the browser is going to launch. And it's gonna take screenshots. I'll switch to the IDE so you can actually see the screenshots appear here. And well, they're as expected. This is before the change of the value. And this is after the change of the value. So by having the screenshot capability, you actually have a uh, basis laid out for visual regression testing. So in order to assert that when you change functionality or upgrade the version or whatever, the looks um, of the application are still the same. And what's really cool, that very same screenshot fun functionality also works in headless mode. So if I again put the headless flag down here for running VDI 5, and if we look at the file system again, you'll see two more screenshots appearing without the browser even opening up at any point in time. So we are, that's again before and after. So from a runtime perspective, you have everything in place um, to both develop efficiently, safeguard yourself while developing, and even have um, the basis for visual regression testing. Yet, of course, everything um, sort of relates to the selector and the way you identify controls in a UI5 application. So what's the best way to construct such a selector? So this part down here, all for one, you can look at the VDI 5 documentation. We have for all possible locators that we took from OPA 5 and made them compatible into VDI 5 examples put here. Then there's a second complementary way. There's the UI 5 test recorder. So I'm hitting shift control option T here. And it opens the structure of um, the UR5 views or the views in the UR5 application. And I can then select any kind of control in the application and have it. Let me make this a little smaller so we can actually see everything. And have it export the entire runtime code for my test, including the most fitting, the best fitting selector. And I can even add an assertion in here by selecting one or more properties of that control. And as of today, as of right now, actually, there's gonna be, or there will be, there is a third complementary way of how you could come up and um, have the best possible selector code and an easier way 
of uh, constructing selectors, which is the UL5 journey recorder that's public as of today. It's a Chrome extension. So I hit the respective icon up here. It's in beta status. It's gonna be on the Chrome web store as soon as Google uh, wants it to be. So it's put in there and we're still waiting for the confirmation that it's gonna be public. The UR5 journey recorder is coded by Adrian Martin, a longtime UR5 community member. And he maintains it also, of course. And it lives well in the UR5 GitHub community. So how does it work? Um, if you open it up, you can connect to the application that you wanna record. And once the journey recorder is connected, you can interact with the application the way you see fit. So I'm changing the value here. I'm navigating to the other view. I'm navigating back. And then I stop the recording. And what you see down here then is the recording of the different steps that I took while operating the application. Let's give this a name. Let's save it. And then let me show you what you can do. You can not only replay a journey in either manual or automatic mode, by hitting play here. So this navigates me to the user input. This changes the value. This navigates to the other view and navigates back. But, and now we come back to VDI5 and OPA5, in fact, you can have a look. Let me take the input step. So while changing the value, you can have auto-generated code for each one of those steps. So this is um, the pre-baked code for, for entering the very wrongly spelled hello dev total test here. And let me copy this. And not only that, can you export or generate code per step? Let's take the forward button, the navigation forward button for OPA5 and VDI5, but you can also export the entire scenario or the entire journey as a multi-step journey in the form of page objects for VDI5 and OPA5. And download the entire thing and get started with um, a very quick way of getting um, VDI5 or OPA5 tests to work. Now I've copied um, selecting or changing the value of the code in the input or the value of the text, I'm sorry, um, in the input control. And if I put this in here instead of this one, and I fix my assertion down here, You will see that, well, it works as designed. You have the journey recorder, recording how to operate a UR5 application, and then copy paste that generated code at any point in time or into your tests. Okay, cool. Now we have seen the alignment of the APIs, Node.js scope, browser scope. We've seen how VDI5 hopefully eases your implementation effort and safeguards your implementation effort. Um, you've seen how to best generate actually selectors and test code, how to quickly get started with certain tests. 
but we were all the time running um, locally here on our machine with Chrome as the default browser. Of course, you want to test on um, a variety of operating systems and browsers. And for that, you can hook up VDI5 locally or any VDI5 environment, such as running in a GitHub action, running in a GitLab pipeline to a browser cloud testing service, such as browser stack. So here you see the browser stack API, uh, API the UI, I'm logged in here and you see my builds are empty. And if we now take a look at the WDIO con, con so the VDI5 configuration, you'll see that as of now, we're using the Chrome driver service, AKA extension and UI5, AKA VDI5. Um, if I change that now, to a suitable configuration for browser stack. The main differences are, I'm not using the Chrome driver service anymore, but I'm using the browser stack service and I'm denoting the connection between my local environment to the browser stack cloud environment via browser stack local. And of course I'm using VDI 5 so the UI5 service for web driver IO. And up here, you see the capabilities that I wanna test my UI5 application with VDI5 on, meaning or saying I wanna test it on Edge, on Windows 11 and on Safari on OS X. So they're still calling it OS X even though it's Mac OS. If I now run the very same tests, for the very same test that we've um, come up with during this uh, presentation here. I'll now see that, oh, I think I've edited the wrong, I'm sorry, I've edited the wrong configuration again. So wrong file here. So this one I need to edit, I'm sorry. So if I now run the very same test again, you can already see that there's two workers starting. And if I look at the UI of browser stack, you'll see, I'll make it a bit larger, it's really difficult, that there's my local test environment hooked up to these two browsers or these two platforms executing the tests but, or even hitting the breakpoints. And then reporting the results back in here. So my test is wrong. Since I'm not setting the value anymore, And you'll see the exact same wrong test result in browser stack. So here is the report of my browser stack run. It failed on MS Edge on Windows, and it failed also on Safari in on macOS. And I can see the fails up here. Now, if I fix the tests and I run it again. So I fixed it. Remember, I commented in that one line here. I can see it'll run again on browser stack and then hopefully reporting the tests as, as successful. So let me again make it so that you can hopefully see somewhat both at the same time. So this enables you to hook up the VDI5 environment, be it on your local machine or on in any other context to a cloud testing service, um, reducing the need for local infrastructure, yet giving you the confidence of testing an application across a variety of platforms. So here now the tests have passed. And in the browser stack case, you can even 
we play a little video of how your test ran. Okay, so that's on the half hour step mark. Um, what have you seen? Again, you have seen um, how to most efficiently equip um, a UFI application here in TypeScript, even with VDI5. You have seen um, how the APIs are aligned between VDI5 and UI5, Node.js scope, browser scope. Um, we, I've demonstrated how VDI5 actually gets out of the way, yet uh, provides debugging capabilities and can run alongside your implementation. And you can use the UI5 journey recorder and the UI5 test recorder for coming up with the best fitting selectors for the UI5 controls you want to test in the UI5 application. And then as a last step of sorts, leveling up the whole game of connecting the VDI5 environment to a browser cloud testing service. So now I'm done. Awesome. Thanks, Volker. And uh, we had some very interesting questions in the chat in the meantime. I try to answer, uh, to answer you know, most of them. But one that stuck out was, why are you preferring TypeScript? Um, because BDI5 also works with, with JavaScript. So um, what's your take on that? Um, it's just my personal preference because I feel more comfortable um, from a developer experience point of view using TypeScript. But the very same principle applies to a Java, regular JavaScript based UF5 applications. So instead of equipping it with um, VDI5 with the dash dash TypeScript um, switch, you just do NPM in it, VDI5 at latest, and there you have VDI5 for your JavaScript application. All right, cool, perfect, thanks. And then another question was, how can you test user roles uh, with a CDS or C.json file? Mm -hmm. um, this is something that's coming up. So it essentially boils down to, I think, authentication capabilities of VDI5. Um, this is in the works. So um, there's going to be BTP-based authentication coming first, meaning the cloud-based IDP and the custom IDP. And then hopefully um, Fury Launchpad authentication for running or authentication against the Fury Launchpad um, on a local uh, on-premise installation of SAP. Um, and then you can actually um, run tests with different users. And or there is the multi-browser capability available for EDI5 as well. It's called multi-remote. It's here documented inside recipes. Um, I thought, and it's inside usage. So there is the multiple browser instances where let me make this a little smaller, hopefully, so you can read things better, where you can have two browsers um, running for one test and operating those two individually or exclusively to each other. So you can have the one or the browser named one in this case doing one thing and the browser named two in this case doing another thing. So it should probably be somewhat obvious from this coding here. So the one browser hits an open dialog button and then the other, other browser hits the very same button. Awesome. And I'm going to use this chance to promote uh, this week's Fun Friday event because there we're going to play a in browser game where I was doing exactly that, but just manually. Like I had to, you know, put multiple browser windows against each other to, you know, play against me, I guess. So mm -hmm. tune in this, this Friday um, for the Fun Friday event. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I should also mention that we uh, had a lot of compliments for the framework and for your demo in the chat, Volker. So uh, good job. And I think if there are no more questions, I think we're good for today. I put the link to the VDI5 documentation and the GitHub repo and all that 
um, in the chat already. So if you have a question left, uh, just shoot now. Otherwise, we would close the sessions. We'll give it another 15 seconds. Let me end with a um, um, comment on the contributing section here in the documentation. Um, we try to develop big AI5 in the open, and by we, I refer to the UI5 community. It's not a company by any means. And it's um, not easy, but at least it's very doable to get aboard and um, try to put in the stuff that you feel missing from VDI5 yourself, or at least start. And then um, as a community effort, we can advance VDI5 as a whole. So um, you're very much welcome to join in and uh, contribute, even if it's only in quotes documentation, um, the more the merrier. That's what it's about. Awesome, thanks. And we have no more questions in the chat. So I think we're good. Yeah, and someone can't wait for, for Friday. <laughs> Looking forward, Raphael. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, talk to you next time. Thanks, Volker. Bye.